Hey, give this video a thumbs up if you're a fan of Shark Tank. Join the notification squad by subscribing and hitting that bell notification on. But also, don't forget to comment down below saying I subscribed to enter our monthly shoutout. And we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Hope you enjoyed the video. Depending on the situation, if you're an entrepreneur, Shark Tank can either make your dreams come true or shred them to bits. Some entrepreneurs land on their feet and their businesses blossom after the show, while others simply disappear. Whatever the case may be, hold your breath as we dive in and check out 10 Shark Tank businesses before and after the show. A man by the name of Rick Hopper, a former supervisor at Home Depot, found himself constantly misplacing his reading glasses, which greatly frustrated him. Tired of the same thing happening to him all the time, he came up with a solution. A magnetic pocket filler that allows people to clip their glasses to their shirt when they're not wearing them. While glasses placed in a pocket would slip out and crash to the floor whenever a person bends or leans over something, Hopper's patent kept them safely in place. When Hopper came up with this patent, which was called Read Rest, it was nothing more than a hit among his family and friends, so he decided to jump into Shark Tank. On the show, Hopper earned $100,000 from sales when his product appeared on QVC, a flagship shopping channel specializing in televised home shipping, and has ultimately done over $27 million in sales overall. In the first episode ever, Omar Solomon and Nick Friedman came to the show looking to score a deal for an extension of their College Hunks hauling junk franchise called College Foxes Packing Boxes. After some intense negotiating, the Sharks eventually did give the guys an offer, but Solomon and Friedman then asked for $1 million in exchange for 10% of their business. O'Leary, the most triggered shark, called them pigs and said that the pigs get slaughtered. When he said he was out, one of the guys shot back that it's a good thing because it means he'll stop talking. Omar and Nick said no to other offers and chose to maintain full ownership of the College Hunks brand. After the episode aired, their franchise tripled in size, going from 16 franchises to more than 50. Moreover, their growth in revenue skyrocketed and grew 42.6% from 2011 to 2013 alone and continued to rise throughout the later years. Obviously, the guys made the right choice when they decided to maintain full ownership of their company. Coming up in this pick, we have a mother and daughter team behind Wicked Good Cupcakes. Tracy Noonan and her daughter Danielle formed the company after attending a cake decorating class. After posting photos of their baked goods online, friends and family started sending requests. However, shipping the cupcakes turned out to be a problem for the two, so they decided to ship them in jars. Their business boomed only after a transportation security administration agent at an airport confiscated samples of the cupcakes in a jar and declared them a risk to national security. When they appeared on Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary was quick to offer them a deal which they took, $75,000 in exchange for $1 for every cupcake sold, until he gets his money back and then $0.45 cents for every cupcake sold afterwards. Tracy Noonan, the CEO of the company, said, The royalty deal has worked great for us, and that's ironic because after we aired, I received a ton of emails from people telling me how stupid I was to take that deal. Despite that, after accepting O'Leary's offer, Wicked Good Cupcakes has sold a total of $14 million worth of treats, according to Noonan. A married couple, Doug and Renata Store, took a dive into the Shark Tank and pitched their idea of Night Runner 270, a model of running shoes with rechargeable LED lights that are able to light up everything within 270 degrees around the wearer. Apparently Doug was training for his fifth marathon on a dark early morning when he stumbled and fell. After hobbling home, the injured husband told his wife that he needs headlights for his sneakers and their idea was born. After hearing the pitch, Robert Herjavec recognized the potential of the idea and made the stores an offer. He was ready to invest $250 in exchange for 15% of the company. Still, it wasn't meant to happen since after the episode aired, more than 300 companies reached out to the stores interested in buying their product. Realizing that they don't need an investor anymore, the stores took the risk and their deal with the shark fell through. However, while their sales totaled $120,000 before the show, after the episode aired, the couple got unimaginable traffic and ended the year at $880,000, which eventually led to making $1.5 million in revenue later on. When Tanya Green from Boston came on Shark Tank, she asked for $50,000 in exchange for 20% of her company, PMS Bites, which sells snacks designed to ease the symptoms of PMS. 
She explained all the unpleasantries of PMS, but didn't land a deal, and Kevin O'Leary even called her the princess of small numbers. According to Green, she didn't see her failed pitch as a complete defeat, but held her head high and kept it together. On a trip to Miami after filming the show, she ran into Kevin O'Leary at a hotel pool bar and sent him a round of drinks with a note which said, Mr. Wonderful, it was such a pleasure pitching in front of you last season. You're the best one. Please enjoy this round of drinks on me. Sincerely, the princess of small numbers. Nowadays, Green is not really looking to grow her business and doesn't invest in marketing at all. I have a product, the website is available, and we are making small amounts of profit. When Shark Tank airs in reruns, I can be like, here it is, you can purchase it, and we're good to go, she said. Almost nine years ago, Gayla Bentley came to the Shark Tank to pitch her idea of a fashion line. Her selling point was that the fashion line would be only for women over size 12, which got some of the sharks interested. In exchange for 50% stake in Gayla Bentley fashion, Barbara Corcoran and Damon John invested $250,000. Even though they hammered out the details offset after the episode was recorded, the celebrity investors never heard back from Gayla. Also, strangely enough, her company was closed merely a month or two later. Feeling screwed over, both Corcoran and John recall upon this as their worst investment ever. In Season 5, one of the pitches was for a mobile app called Scan. Garrett Gee came in asking for $1 million investment in exchange for a 5% stake in his code scanning mobile app. The young man explained that scannable codes are everywhere today and that he and a handful of college buddies developed a mobile app that he claimed was the easiest way of scanning and interacting with any of these codes. The app was free and available both on iOS and Android services, with 51 million downloads overall and 27 million monthly users. However, after being bombed with questions from the Sharks, Guy revealed that they have already dealt with investors and that the company had already raised $8.7 million. Since Damon John immediately asked him why is he even on the show and is he just looking for exposure. Even though Guy didn't land a deal on the show, it wasn't all that bad since his company was acquired by Snapchat later on for a whopping $54 million. Back in 2011, Micah Baticchio and Sean Lees decided to showcase their country clothing line called Hillbilly Brand and Shark Tank. The guys quickly laid out their asking price of $50,000 in exchange for 25% stake in their company. The Sharks were thrilled, and soon enough the hopeful entrepreneurs landed a deal with Damon John, Robert Herjavec, and guest shark Jeff Foxworthy. Still, after the show was aired, the negotiations lasted for several months and seemingly led to nowhere, as they simply couldn't come to terms. The guys behind the Hillbilly brand decided that the exposure and the advertisement they got from the show was enough so they walked away from the deal. However, since appearing on the show, the brand has drawn a lot of attention and became quite successful, appearing in a few retail locations while the majority of their product sells online through their website. Coming up with this pick we have Nikki Pope from Season 2. In the second episode of the season, Nikki came to the show to pitch her and her husband's idea of a company that would essentially work like Netflix for toys. The company was called Toygaru and functioned like an online toy rental service that allowed parents to rent toys for their kids on a monthly basis. Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary approved and supported the concept by investing $200,000. However, this investment did not turn out to be as fruitful as they hoped it would be, since only one year after the deal was struck, the company filed for bankruptcy and ultimately closed after a series of arguments between the owners, which left the Sharks majorly screwed over. So much so that both O'Leary and Cuban commented that it must have been their biggest mistake ever. The way the entrepreneurs pitch their products and businesses can either make or break a deal. Unfortunately for John Tabas, CEO of the Books company, it was the latter. The man came to the panel of sharks to ask for $258,000 for a 3% stake in his company that handles flower delivery service while cutting out the middleman and delivering the flowers directly to customers. O'Leary was mostly silent throughout the pitch, as the entrepreneur's somewhat poor presentation killed his interest. For one reason or another, all the sharks went out of the deal, but three years later, when he was looking for flowers for his wedding, Robert Herjavec got in contact with Tabas to learn why do the flowers cost that much. After learning more about the flower business, Herjavec was actually impressed by Tabas and his company's sales and business models so much that he jumped in on the business by investing in it. Needless to say, Tabas' business is thriving nowadays as its net worth passed well over $43.10 million. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day.
turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.